Welcome for the lecture review for my CompTIA Security Plus. Here we're looking at the Guide to Network Security Fundamentals, 5th edition by Cengage. This is chapter 1, which is an intro to security. Main objective is to describe the challenges of securing information, define InfoSec and explain why it's important, explain the types of attacks that are common today, list the uh, basic steps for an attack, and describe the five basic principles of defense. So challenges for securing information, honestly, there is no real simple solution. There are many solutions to securing data, but sometimes they're not always as straightforward or as easy as they may seem to be. Also, there are different types of attacks, viruses, malware, trojans, social engineering, identity theft. Those are all just a few of the major types of attacks that can be used to steal information. Also, defending against attacks is often more difficult than it seems. One, two, it's very expensive. Security is expensive, but at the same time, the possibility of having data stolen could be even more expensive, but security is a balancing act. At one point, you have to worry about the likelihood of theft and the likelihood of a security event. If you want to protect the world's greatest pizza recipe and it's valued at $100,000, are you going to spend a million dollars to secure it? No, because it's not worth it at that point. So there is a balancing act when we talk about security. So some security attacks going on, uh, identity theft, credit card theft, uh, ATM machines, uh, taking over some type of social media like Twitter or Facebook accounts, uh, server attacks are always a big one, um, using Craigslist or eBay to lure victims to download malware, that's a, sadly a very common one, uh, pinning, uh, pin penetrating of Apple's uh, network, that, that's more when that was recent. Heck, Facebook, eBay, Google, all of them have had major data breaches. Not maybe as bad as Sony, but I mean, they've all still had data breaches. Um, depending on when you want to look at this, some of this material is dated early 2015. So here is like Target. They're still mentioning car, uh, Target. 110 million identity stolen. Though the Adobe uh, breach was worse. It was 152 million. But then again, we're also talking OPM from the federal government. And again, that's massive as well. So types of attacks uh, that are actually exposing identities are just growing. It's difficult to defend against the many different types of attacks. Universally connected devices are a big one. Uh, the speed and the craftiness of the attacks, the scripts of the attacks, the attacks are getting uh, more sophisticated. Also, uh, ethical hacking tools, sorry, hacking tools in general are becoming way easier to use. And uh, because of that, they're also becoming more readily available. Though, faster detection of vulnerabilities is also starting to play a huge role in defending against attacks. As people find these vulnerabilities, sometimes they're willing to get paid to patch them or define them and then notify the appropriate owner 
of the system so that they can get patched, though sometimes they don't. The nice thing is that certain types of attacks could also become or are increasing because of things like BYOD or lack of user training. It could also be things like uh, weak policies and procedures of an organization or delays in deploying updates. Again, uh, sophistication of attacks distributed attacks, in, uh, introducing BYOD, all of these play a huge role. So what exactly is information security? So we have to understand before defense is possible, we have to have a, we have, to have a working understanding of what exactly security is, how security relates to information security, and we have to have some terminology so that we can understand how security relates to information security. So, security is the goal to be free from danger or to be free from a dangerous event or the process that achieves that freedom. Harm or danger can come from one of many sources indirectly or directly, direct action that is intended to infiltrate or to inflict damage. Indirect, uh, indirectly is an unintentional action, yet still causes harm or danger. As security is increased, typically convenience is often decreased. I always say that the best way to secure a room is to lock the building. If the building is locked, no one can get inside the building, then clearly that room is secure. However, you, that, defeats, uh, that will defeat the purpose of that room. So that doesn't really do any good. As you uh, start securing something, usability starts going away because it really is a nice triangle. As you move towards security, you move away from usability. As you get closer to usability, the further away from security you get. So, they, you can't have both. Here you see a lovely chart of convenience versus security. Information security deals with the tasks of securing information that is stored digitally. And that could be manipulated by a microprocessor, stored on some type of electronic storage media, or transmitted over a network. Information security goal or goals is to ensure that the protective measures are properly implemented to ward off, when possible, attacks and to prevent the total collapse of the system when a, a successful attack might occur. Typically, we look at information security, we define it as CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality is only the approved individuals have access to that information. Integrity is you can make sure that while it's in transit, it is unaltered, and what was sent is what you are actually receiving, and availability, that's the data is accessible to the appropriate users when needed. Though, it also looks at protection implementation, authorization, authentication, and accounting. Accounting takes uh, holds or tracks of the events. Authorization seeks to verify what permissions you're allowed to do. Authentication verifies that you, you are who you claim you, you are. Information security is achieved through the process that is a combination of 
sometimes through software, through communication, through hardware. Honestly, I don't truly believe that. I think it's more of a collection and layers, but that's a good start. These entities are protected in specific layers, product, peoples, and the appropriate policies and procedures as outlined by the organization. Again, I don't think these are the only layers. It's just our author has decided those are the appropriate layers that needed to be discussed. So when we start looking at that, we start looking at uh, different layers, such as like the organizational security, personal security, and the physical security. And through those layers, we then start getting into the appropriate CIA triad, which is, again, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Again, products, these are going to be from the security around the data. See, this is one of the problems. Products could also cover physical security or network security. People, that's going to be the appropriate security personnel that will implement products to protect the data. And then plans, procedures, policies that should be enforced so that items are kept secure. Specific terminology that we need to understand are things like assets, threats, a threat agent. An asset is an item that has a value to it. A threat is the type of action that has the potential to cause harm to that asset. Threat agent is a person or element with the power to carry out a threat. Uh, here are, again, further ones. Uh, software, system software, like an operating system, physical items, and services. These are all basic items which you should already be familiar with. Other important terms, vulnerability, threat vector, threat likelihood, and risk. Risk is always a good one, which is a situation that involves exposure to some type of danger. A risk assessment will actually be a calculated assessment to see likelihood of the uh, event occurring. Threat likelihood is, again, the likelihood that the threat agent would exploit a specific vulnerability. Threat vector is the means by which an attack could occur. And vulnerability is, again, a flaw or weakness that allows a threat agent to bypass typical security. Options to deal with risks are things such as risk avoidance, risk acceptance, risk mitigation, deterrence, or transference. Risk avoidance involves identifying the risk but not engaging in it. Acceptance is just acknowledging it and not performing any steps uh, to address it. Risk mitigation might be uh, attempts to address the risks by making it less serious. Deterrence could be understanding the attackers and informing them of consequences of their actions, trying to get them to avoid it. And then transference is transferring the risk to some third party if possible. Again, assets, threats. Here are some examples of the terminology. The security plans are helpful in preventing things like data theft, uh, thwarting identity theft, avoiding compliance concerns or other legal consequences, uh, maintaining productivity because the data is kept secure, uh, and kind of preventing cyber terrorism. So that's kind of a, a far stretching one. Preventing data theft basically making sure that data can't be stolen. Uh, that includes both business and personal data. Swatting identity theft. Stealing another person's identity or information for financial gain. So helping prevent things like stealing SSNs or uh, 
stealing addresses and birth dates and things of that nature. Avoiding legal consequences. Again, following things such as state, federal law, or industry law. Understanding the compliances like things like SOX or HIPAA, PCI DSS or ISO E27000 series family, or even just data breach notification acts. I'm in Nevada and we have a data breach notification act. So post attack cleanup, that's something that people don't always think about. It's not always the pre-attack and attack, but what happens afterwards. And that goes into productivity maintenance and how well you can actually work after the attack. Next is cyber terrorism. Uh, again, this is going to be really changing depending on the year, but cyber terrorism is any permittance political motivated attacks against information systems, programs, or data typically designed to cause panic provoke violence, or that there was financial gain or catastrophe. May be directed at a individual, organization, country, state, so forth. So who are these hackers? Uh, hacker or cracker is, uh, is a person who uses skills to attack a computer. Black hat versus white hat. Black hat normally does it illegally. White hat is uh, more ethical. Gray hat is a combination of both. Hackers are not always bad. Crackers are not always bad. Sometimes this is very subjective. Typically, how I remember this is white hats have permission, black hats don't. Black hats typically do it for personal gain. White hats normally look for what's going on, where are the flaws, so that they can be uh, patched or fixed. Many types of categories of attackers. It just kind of depends. Hacktivists, state-sponsored attackers are bigger ones. Script kitties are just going to be individuals that don't have any real skill, but they know how to run scripts. Cyber criminals or cyber organizations could be comprised of hacktivists and state-sponsored hackers. Hacktivists typically hack because they have a specific cause. Cyber criminals uh, typically are highly more uh, highly motivated, and they're willing to take a lot more risks. Uh, they conduct or they do cyber crime, and cyber crime targets uh, attacks against financial networks or theft of personal information for financial gain. Cyber criminals are typically a lot better funded. They actually have a more advanced persistent threat, which is a multi-year intrusion campaign that targets highly sensitive economic proprietary or other national secrets, they play the long game. They're not in it for short gain or short returns. They're in it for the long. Script kitties, again, are individuals who attack computers that they don't have the real knowledge. Uh, they run exploit kits, which are typically automated packages. Brokers are attackers who sell knowledge for vulnerability or other attackers or governments. Typically, they're hired by vendors to uncover vulnerabilities, though this is not as common uh, wording. I mean, you don't call them brokers, typically. Insiders, that's going to be workers inside the organization. Cyber terrorists, again, we've already described. Hacktivists are attackers who attack for uh, ideological reasons. Generally, they could or could not be well-funded. They're, uh, they're not as well-defined as cyber-terrorists. 
uh, it could be hacktivists get together because they don't like an or uh, cosmetic testing on animals. So a group starts hacking the organ, uh, the farm, uh, farm uh, makeup companies to show how horrible they are. That'd be a hacktivist. State-sponsored attackers. These are attackers commissioned by the government to attack the government's enemies. Attacks and defense. It, this varies drastically, and this is continuously changing. So to protect computers against attacks, follow the appropriate five fundamental security principles of defense. Again, this is more in general, not specific. Cyber kill chain. There is a kill chain for these types of attacks. Reconnaissance, weaponization, delivery, exploitation, and installation. Understanding the kill chain of an attack means that you can actually start targeting ways to get rid of it or prevent it. The kill chain actually has a few more layers. Command and control, action on objects, and typically stay hidden or stay masked. That's the general eighth one, or maintain access and stay hidden, but they're not listed here because they're not always included in these cyber kill chains. The defense uh, against the attacks come in layers. First one obviously is layering, limiting, diversity, obscurity, and simplicity. This is what they're wanting us to describe, though obscurity is not always the best because there are a lot of tools out there that can actually help find them. So, obscurity is not always the best option. Simplicity, again, not always a good one, too. Layering, it's about layered approaches, not having a single defense mechanism, but having multiple. Limiting access to information helps reduce the threats. Least privilege uh, principles should always be there. Only those that need it should have access to it. Methods of limiting access could be technology or procedural. Uh, technology could be like permissions. Diversity is closely related to layering, but it's slightly different. If an attacker penetrates one layer, same techniques um, will be unsuccessful in breaking through other layers, possibly. So having a diverse um, mechanism for layering could be uh, there. For example, I've always had, well, do you want the same firewall throughout? If they're able to penetrate one firewall, how easy would they be to penetrate the second firewall? It kind of depends on how they're penetrating it. It could be a flaw in the firewall software as opposed to them having account credentials. But I mean, that's what we talk about diversity is maybe having changing between layers so that makes it harder for an attacker to gain through each of the individual layers. Obscurity is inside details to outsiders. Obscuring in, uh, details, not revealing as, uh, as little as possible. Things like the type of computers, operating systems, brands of the hardware used. All of this will make the attack a little harder. Though there are tools out there that help identify all of this in basic reconnaissance, but this is just a simple way of helping the uh, do basic defense. Simplicity. So the nature of information security is complex. So complex security systems can be difficult to understand and troubleshoot. So if it's a little bit more simplified, it makes it easier. And that's actually chapter one in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please let me know.